All right, let's switch gears a little bit, yeah? We're gonna start going into some singles, some molar, right? Molar sort of style and implement that into another grid as well. So basically, if we're gonna break it down a little bit. That works. All right, so molar, molar. So for us, like the main reason why we, we use the molar technique is to, to be able to create a great sound while still getting the rhythm across, right? And trying to make the rhythm nice and smooth, nice and even. Again, trying to get that Sibelius style quality with no errors or flaws, right? In terms of the rhythmic accuracy. Yeah, bless you. So, how we're gonna break this thing down, it's all derived, at least the way we like to approach it and start working our way up is from the wrist. Does that make sense? We're starting to go from that wrist bobbing idea, right? So it kind of goes back to the hand shape that we talked about at the beginning of the day. Nice and open, but the fingers are still there for support, kind of cradling the stick. Does that make sense? But we're not using our bigger muscle groupings quite yet until we get to that inflection or that accent. Right, but it all starts from the wrist. Does that make sense? Yes, no? Yes. All right, cool. So. All starting from that wrist, letting it rock back and forth. Now, how to get that inflection and that accent is just a slight twitch of the elbow, allowing all that motion to carry through the fingertips, through to the bead, and create that accent. Does that make sense? So it's kind of like a wave, right? Like you drop a pebble into water, how it starts that entire motion going all the way to the surface or, you know, the shore, so to speak, right? The shore. The shore. <laughs> Right, so if you're trying to get that wrist involvement first, add in that inflection from that elbow. Just let that motion carry all the way through the tip of the stick or to the bead. You'll get that nice fat pop that you want out of that accent. Does that make sense? Right, same idea goes with the left, but we'll break that down in a little bit. Does that make sense? So what we're gonna do is kind of go and break it down from four to twos to ones, kind of like a grid, right? But it's not as complicated. Does that make sense? So, starting off with four counts of check. Four counts of, with accents. Does that make sense? And then repeat. Does that make sense? Cool, let's just start off with that much. Marking time to the quarter note. Any questions? Hop. Huh? One more time. Yes. Here we go. Aiden, you're in, please. Tap to breathe a little bit more, yeah? You're kind of constricting that down. A little bit different than how you approach it, right? End with a, end with a tap, please. Last time, last time. Cool. Check it out for a sec. So the main reason why we're trying to have you go from that wrist idea and have that as the forefront of this whole, of this whole idea is mainly because as soon as we start adding in that accent, a lot of us naturally just kind of drop on the inner notes. Right, so as we get further and further, it's gonna start compressing that rhythm to basically 60 notes. As opposed to rounding it out like an actual triplet. Does that make sense? So that's why we're trying to say, support the idea from the wrist the entire time. Yeah, so that way, once you hit that accent, 
You're getting a lot of beef in terms of volume and quality from those inner notes, but also the rhythm is accurate as opposed to just kind of dropped on. That makes sense? Because that's just a completely different skill set by itself. Cool. So with that being said, let's go on to the twos pattern. Yeah, so you're doing two of each. Right, two counts. One, two, one, two, one, two. Repeat. Ending with a tap. Yeah, so four times of the twos. Cool. Some of you might remember this from years past. Some of you might not. This could be totally new, but bear with us. Yep, starting right on the twos, right on the twos. Eight in your in, please. Let's go ahead and bring sticks up since we're starting in the middle of an exercise. Two. It's not a split or what? <laughs> Playing bass drum? Try not to open up so much from the back of the hand. Ready, go. Two, last time. You can kind of start hearing, relax. You can already kind of hear how that rhythm is starting to compress. Right, again, we're really trying to go for that more open feel in terms of just the rhythm. Does that make sense? And an easy way to kind of help, uh, help that is not letting this guy be in control the whole time, right? I'm looking across the board at all of our hands, like what our hands are looking like in transit or like in motion. Fingers are all off the stick. I'm not saying that they need to be completely on and squeezing the entire time, but what needs to happen is they, they should be cradling the stick just a little bit more, keeping the stick a little bit closer to the palm. Yeah, so then from there, it makes it a lot easier to basically have that knocking on the door idea, knocking on the door motion. Does that make sense? Like in theory, that should, that should help out a lot to be able to open up the rhythm and make it feel more comfortable. Does that make sense? So, going to the ones, you're doing one count of each. One. And go ahead and end with the accent there. Yeah? So it basically turns it into a backbeat. One, two, four, two, four, two, four, two, four, uh. Got it? Are we able to just add that on from the top since it's a pretty basic exercise, right? Yeah. And then on top of that, let's go ahead and add on four bars of just straight triplets on the right hand, molar style with accents on every downbeat. Yeah? So as soon as you get through that, one. Two, three, four, and stop there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Sweet. Let's go left hand release, please. Good question, Bryce. You're welcome. <laughs> Can I get three people right away? Three people sitting down. One to go and two to wait on deck. And then who does not have the audition pieces before today? Someone just got them. <laughs> Are you here tomorrow? All right, can you learn them tonight? And then give them a shot tomorrow? Got anything to say for flow marching? What's up, flow? <laughs> <laughs> you got me mic'd up, dude. You should bring the whole, the whole production studio into the, audi in the video audition for one person. Yeah. <laughs> here we go. Hit in your in. get less finger, more wrist.
Much better. Motion looks good. Looks good. Good to butt. That. All right. <laughs> you kind of feel what I'm saying though? Like a lot of it is just like right, sorry. Ugh. It's like right before the accent, you start using a little bit more finger. And then it just kind of dies out. These feel really good by the way. Um, it just kind of dies out toward the end as opposed to like actually keeping that smooth quality throughout. Yeah. So just keep using that wrist and try and get more velocity as you get toward the accent. Makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Not bad. The motion is actually pretty good. A lot of the time, though, you're slicing, hitting in the center, and then pulling away as you get into those taps. You know what I mean? So you're getting touch, 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 touch. It's not that far either. It really isn't. It's just mainly like you're hitting almost halfway. So then you're getting a different timbre, right? So just try and keep that up and down motion. Feel different? Yeah. yeah. It just looks more comfortable and it looks like it feels better. Cool. So it sounds a lot better too. It's a lot more beefy and just kind of smoothens out the sound a little bit. It's good. <clears throat> I'll still enjoy the same thing, Khalees. I'll still enjoy the same thing where it kind of dies out as you get to the accent. You know what I mean? So try and get more wrist involvement and just try and get that wrist to be stronger going into the accent. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. yeah. You got a wrist. Sure. Yeah, I feel like, honestly, uh, I feel like when I'm, you said not to open the back of the hand. Not as much. So I guess how am I making it so the next note doesn't go up to as high as the last note without? Because I feel like I kind of mean like inner note going to accent. I kind of feel like I'm doing this a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Just to get the difference between that accent. And that. Well, a lot of it is just switching the idea from using this as your fulcrum to more of this instead. So then you're getting that pinky and that ring finger a little bit more involved, if that makes sense. So then from there, that allows you to use your wrist a lot more. Would you say if I like, practice like? Style. Yeah, pretty much. That might help out. Cool. All right. Let's work on the left hand so that way we can get both hands involved and then we'll switch out totally. Yeah? yeah. All right. So, thank you, sir. Sure.